welcome back guys. Today is September the 19th and the goldenrod is starting to bloom in my area. And I have actually not been in these beehives since the last honey harvest video that I did, which was several, several months ago. So I wanna get in these hives. I wanna get out the rest of the honey that I didn't get back then. And that should allow the bees to go ahead and have some space to put up some goldenrod honey for the winter. It's been a couple of hours since I was out here trimming and mowing around the hives, so I'm hoping that they've calmed down some. I'm hoping that some of the bees that were angry at me earlier are out in the field foraging right now, but I've already been stung once, so I don't really know. We'll just, we'll just see what happens. So I usually like to work barehanded and I get comments about that sometimes. It just gives me better dexterity, but I don't know what their attitude is gonna be right now. <clears throat> so I do have some gloves in the Jeep just in case. They are still acting just a little bit irritated. <laughs> I think y'all can probably tell from the camera, but the camera is actually level. You can see this hive is way, way slanted. There's some issues with some of the parts and pieces of the hive. And hopefully if they'll let me, we'll do some hive repairs too. That's great, that's a full frame of honey right there. We'll take this box for sure. The reason that the wax looks so dark like this is this is undoubtedly spring honey and it's just been in here so long the bees have been walking around on it with their dirty little feet and they have just made it dark. Doesn't affect the honey at all. The honey still looks very, very nice. I'm not sure that I want to take much more out of this particular hive. It's getting towards uh, changing of the seasons and they're going to need a fair amount of honey to get through the winter. They're going to be bringing goldenrod honey in over the next, uh, I guess, couple of weeks. I'm not really sure. So we'll check right here and see, but I'm not certain that I want to take, I don't want to get too greedy right now. Yeah, so we've got a lot of open cells in here. Probably could be extracted, but I don't know that I want to. And a fair amount of open cells on this side as well. So we'll, we'll stop while we're ahead. Um, once you start taking too much, you end up spending money on sugar syrup. And uh, it's just really not worth it. And honey's a whole lot better health-wise for the bees. Let's see if we can get a new bottom on this hive. walked in the woods to give those bees a little break. I think I'll save my hive repairs for some other day because I'm sure that's ruining the audio in this video. So let's get into another hive a little ways away from that hive and uh, let's just get the honey out for now. Not much going on in this box. We'll just go ahead and take it off. 
Yeah, so this one was extracted in the spring. You can kind of tell because you see kind of the remnant, the remnant, remnant honey kind of along the top and on the sides where it was cut out. The cappings were cut out of the middle and these edges were left. So they never really refilled this uh, to speak of. We'll keep going here. Yeah, there's some honey in this box. I'll probably take this one. So there's a fair amount in that one right there. Let's see what the next one's looking like. I can see a good amount of honey on the top here. I just hope there's not eggs in the bottoms. Oh no, that looks great. Look at that. That's beautiful. We'll definitely take this box. That's great. This one looks like it may be a winner. By the way, on that last hive, I actually ended up putting that one box that had just a few frames back and taking the one that had lots of frames just to make sure they had enough for the winter. Oh yeah, look at that. That is wonderful. I'll check that out. So the bees usually do a really good job of putting honey in the middle of the frames, but you really get the story of the box when you check on the frames that are kind of on the edges. So we'll check on the second to last ones here and see what they're looking like too. Oh yeah, see that's, that's fantastic. Those look great. Yeah, we'll, we'll take this whole box. oh yeah good and there's a fair amount in this next box too but we're gonna leave it for the winter time See, that's one of the boxes that needs replacing pretty bad. Not seeing anything going on in this one. We'll skip to the next one. Not much in here either. So that works out pretty good. It looks like there's quite a bit of honey in this box that's really messed up, which will give me a really good opportunity to extract the honey as well as replace the box. Let's see how much honey's in here. They're a little irritable. Oh yeah, lots and lots in this one. Again, those cappings are brown because it's just been in here a long time. Doesn't affect the honey in the least. In fact, I really prefer that because it means they haven't had a chance to put goldenrod honey in there. And goldenrod honey is great for bees, tastes like death for people. So I would prefer that there would not be any goldenrod honey in there. Oh boy. Now again, there appears to be a lot of honey in this box right here, but I'm gonna go ahead and leave it for the bees just so they've got enough for the winter. And of course, pulling out frames and checking is not the only way that you can check for how much honey is in one of these boxes. All you really need to do is lift it up and just kind of get a feel for the weight. And uh, you know, if it's heavy enough, you can take it. So 
I'm gonna attempt to do all of this outside in the sun. The temperature is not too bad today and I'm hoping to get kind of better lighting out here than I would get in the shed back there. Somebody on the last honey harvest video suggested that I take a queen excluder and put it on top of my uh, cappings bucket here and let the honey just drain down through the queen excluder into the bucket and I said you know what that's a, that's a pretty good idea so I think what I'll do is just decap these frames on top of the uh, the queen excluder and then I'll put them in another container and smash them up really good and do it again I think that'll save me a lot of honey and probably a lot of headache too Here's another box that I can replace while I'm doing this. So I'm, I'm sure that y'all are noticing all the bees that are gathering around here. That's just kind of one of those things that happens when there's not a whole lot of stuff for the bees to go and get in the springtime, uh, mid, late spring. There's a ton of stuff for them to be going and foraging for, so they don't really bother you when you're extracting honey. But this time of year, there's just not as much. If anything, the goldenrod is coming in, but I don't know how advanced it is. So it doesn't look like they got a whole lot to get out there. So they're coming to kind of reclaim what I just took for them, I think.
All right, so I'm on my sixth and final box here, and I've already filled up one five gallon bucket almost to the top, and I've topped off the five gallon bucket that we extracted last spring a few months ago. I haven't actually bottled that stuff up yet, but I was able to top it off, which was good. So what I'm doing now is I'm just gonna take and I'm gonna fill up like a little two gallon bucket, and that's gonna be our stash for the winter. So this Maxit extractor, it's a really, really nice extractor. And this is my, I think, second year using it. And it works really well. I do find, however, that I need to turn the frames over so that I can get more of the honey out. Of course, they do recommend that you spin the cappings for, I mean, the frames rather, for about three to five minutes or something like that. But doing it by hand, that's kind of tough to do. So I just flip them over and that seems to get most of it out. So if you're gonna get one of these, I would recommend them, but they do have an option that has an electric motor on them. Um, I'd probably spring for one of those. Now while that's draining, I'm gonna take my cappings and crush them up. Quite a bit of the honey has already drained out of them through that, through that uh, queen excluder there. Um, and I expect I'll get a whole bunch more once I get it, once I get them crushed up here. I don't remember who gave me that suggestion, but thank you, that was a stroke of genius. As y'all can see, the bees have come to reclaim what was rightfully theirs in the first place. So I'll just leave these here and they'll clean this up just fine. This is probably uh, 500, 300 yards, I'm not sure, away from the hive. So there's no chance this will stimulate any robbing behavior. And um, this way nothing's wasted. All right, so that's been draining for a while. Let's see how much honey we've got out of these cappings here. Gosh, it looks like a lot. This is just out of the cappings alone. Mm-hmm. 